key case scenario with the previous history of IVF is the topic of our discussion today. So the case scenario is 35 years old primary gravida conceived 10 years after marriage with IVF. On ultrasound throughout the pregnancy she is having intrauterine growth retardation. She has got sudden loss of fetal movements at 30th week. How would you manage her? So after mutual introduction, rapport building confirmed the data given in the scenario. The biodata related questions which are not mentioned in the scenario would be the name of the patient, the age of the patient because advanced maternal age is a risk factor, the education of the patient, occupation, duration of marriage, the parity which is primary gravida in this case but in other cases previous IUD is a risk factor as well. Ask about the last menstrual period and the menstrual cycle whether it was regular or not. Take the detailed history whether the pregnancy was planned or unplanned. Planned in this case because she underwent IVF. How was pregnancy confirmed? Was dating scan done or not? Did that show single or multiple pregnancy? Any anomaly scan done in this pregnancy? Any uh, anomaly or high drops shown on that? Any complaint of bleeding plain discharge? And uh, when did she start noticing decreased fetal movements? Any testing like nickel transcriptancy or genetic testing for aneuploidy like NIPT done or not, which is a very important question in this case. Because if a genetic testing was done, it means that uh, it is least likely that this baby is having any sort of anomalies. Any test like amniocentesis of CVS done or not? Is it first episode or recurrent? Any scan done or not? And any abnormality like cord around neck or anything else told to her or not. So taking detail about IVF is important. Where was IVF done and was it simple IVF or XC or PGD to assess whether chromosomal study was done or not because uh, as I told you before and that if PGD was done then chromosomal anomalies are least likely. If PGD is not done then most likely chromosomal anomalies are present in this patient. I mean the baby of the patient. Now ask questions related to the differential diagnosis of IUFD, the heat intolerance and cold intolerance to rule out hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism respectively. Then excessive thirst or hunger, excessive urination is there in diabetes mellitus. Ask about the history of raised blood pressure, uncontrolled raised blood pressure and um, any history of the joint pain, skin rash and fever to rule out the SLE, history of the fever and shortness of the breath may indicate the sepsis or uh, there might be any other source of sepsis as well so the history should be taken. Then ask about the history of easy fatigability and shortness of the breath that might indicate anemia and uh, if there is history of uh, clot anywhere in the body that might indicate APLS or inherited thrombophilia for APLS you have to ask about the history of recurrent miscarriages as well and um, also previous history of any uh, stillbirth due to placental causes but that is not important in this case so because she is primary gravida so always keep in your mind what case are you dealing with um, ask about uh, history of the fever and uh, skin rash uh, because torch might uh, affect the primary gravida uh, although it is not a cause of recurrent pregnancy loss but in the first pregnancy it's a very important question to ask also take history related to the trauma as well take the detailed obstetric history ask about the modes of the previous deliveries any antenatal and intrapartum complications like pph or the postnatal complications any instrumentation done was it prolonged labor or of normal duration any episiotomy done or not and what were the size of the baby and any gross anomalies in the previous babies so these sort of the questions are needed to be asked but uh, I'm just telling you that as this is a prime primary gravida so uh, detailed obstetric history is not significant because she is primary gravida so always keep in your mind what case are you dealing with in other um, multi gravida you have to ask these questions take the gynecological and obstetric history any complications in the previous section um, 
which is also a question not valid in this case take the medical history like diabetes and hypertension which is important in this case and also take the surgical history the personal history of smoking drug abuse social deprivation the family history of any congenital anomaly or any significant uh, significant family history of any medical illness all these things are very important to ask in this scenario in this case take the drug history any drug misuse and any drug allergy what investigations have been done so far and what management has been done so far in the examination of the patient we have to do complete a general physical examination including the vital um, increased bmi is also a very important point to be noted because uh, maternal obesity is a risk factor for iud do complete systemic examination in the per abdominal examination do inspection palpation for estimated fetal weight the lie liker presentation and fetal cardiac activity whether it is, it is present or not then do, do the uh, baseline investigation including the blood group uh, blood group and rh factor complete blood picture including the hemoglobin total leukocyte count and platelet count the blood sugar random hepatitis profile and urine routine examination CRP is done to rule out infection. The coagulation profile is also very important to done, and also HbA1c if there is a history of the long-standing diabetes. Fetal ultrasound for fetal viability is done for the confirmation of whether it is IUD or not, and also look for the Spalding sign, Robert sign, and the Ball signs. So, in the Spalding sign, there is overlapping of the fetal cranial bones at the sutures after fetal death in the utero, and in the Robert sign. Uh, there is a presence of the gas shadows within the heart of great vessels in cases of fetal death and it is seen one to two days after death and may be seen as early as as uh, 12 hours and the ball sign in iuft refers to fetus body appearing curled into a ball or extreme hyperflexion which is a finding associated with fetal demise so in the management debrief the patient have sympathetic approach toward the patient, involve multidisciplinary team including psychiatrist, explain the complication like DIC and psychological sequelae, explain three options like expectant medical and surgical management. If patient opts for expectant management, tell that 85% of the patient go in spontaneous labor. Meanwhile, we will do two weekly clotting profile. If the patient plans for SVD, do assessment for the live presentation do bishop score and once the baby is delivered do appropriate inspection of the baby for any placenta and for cord around the neck any maceration to check whether it is old or fresh iud any peeling of the skin, skin and any anomaly if patient perm, uh, permits we can go for autopsy as well and to stop lactation we can advise promocriptine initial dose of 1.25 to 2.5 milligram once a day which is increased um, to 2.5 milligram every two to seven days as needed however the uh, usual dose is not more than 15 milligram per day early mobilization and avoidance of dehydration is advised to the patient discuss the contraception option with the patient and in the postnatal visit um, uh, we call the we call the patient for follow-up at six weeks time so that was all about uh, the second scenario of ivft uh, iuft with the uh, history of IVF in current pregnancy subscribe on obscene gyne and follow the facebook page of on obscene gyne